Hello, folks, and welcome to Local Chat, episode number eight, if I am correct. Today is the 25th of February. We're going to talk about video games. We're going to have a fun time. Joining me, as always, is a man who thinks the color gray is just his hair. It's Ian Gibson. Look, all I'm saying is off-white or eggshell are different colors from white. That's all I'm saying. (laughs) And also joining me is a man who... Share a nipple with me. It's Zach. Wow. Different times. Different times, yes. (laughs) Ah, to be 18 again, folks. We are talking gaming news, gaming playing, gaming all sorts of stuff. We're going to get right into it. Because I'm tired and this thing is going to end at 10 o'clock so I can play more of Valheim. Anyways, folks, uh, Ian, do you want to start us off with the beautiful games you've been playing this week? Yeah, I've been playing a whole lot. I'm not sure why. I think I've just kind of been one of my uh, doldrum gaming periods. Uh, but I have been playing some Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2 Rogue Leader on the GameCube. Um, it's I've, I've always been a Rogue Squadron fan. I played the sweep of Jesus out of that uh, Rogue Squadron 3D on N64 and on PC. Um... But I'd never played two or three. And I'm finally correcting that. I think I'm about to beat two. I feel like I'm on the last part of the final mission. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm going to beat it just because it, it reaches this point where it becomes like NES level of difficult. Ooh. I'm going to leave it right there. What do you think NES level <laughs> of difficult means? It means when you die the entire level or game starts over. <laughs> Yeah, it's close to that. It's it, they're at least doing checkpoints, so it's like a big long mission and it's segmented into ch- into like thirds. But basically, it's like they expect you to do a complicated maneuver perfectly for four or five minutes straight, and if you mess up, it restarts. And it's not fun. It's not enjoyable. It's like an on rail segment. It's like that tunnel level in Battletoads. It's just and so I I beat my head against it for like fifty minutes. This, this evening and I came close to beating it, but I, th- I think I'm going to come back and try and beat it because I'm close to it. And then I'll move on to, to Rogue Squadron three. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it for me. I love I love the Rogue Squadron games. They're like perfect arcade. I, I will say the one thing is Rogue Squadron two is on the GameCube. Rogue Squadron is on the 64 slash PC. If somebody told me those were running on the exact same engine. And were basically the same game, I would have 100 percent believe it. Because they are, it's crazy. It's, I'm not complaining, but it's, it plays, it feels, it runs, ex, it looks exactly the same as the first one. And I did not expect an N64 and GameCube game to look that similar to each other. It's pretty crazy, but uh, good times. But anyways, uh, Zach, what have you been playing? Um, I've been playing this, uh, uh, it's a little game. No one really knows about it called Valheim. Never heard um, of it. Yeah, but know. we're going to talk about it in a second. But I've been playing uh, min- Mindustry, my industry. I actually don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, I just stumbled across it because I was looking for a game to play on my phone. And mm. I know there's a PC version of it. It's 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 like an 8-bit or even more 8-bit Factorio. But there's, there's oh, base no. building. And oh, no. yeah, so you get like waves of enemies coming in. Oh, and no come and attack you and then you just have to collect ore and then you can move around the planet to get different ores and then everything kind of still runs and compiles and oh, no. it's pretty fun it's, no ian okay we gotta talk him down <laughs> hey buddy the sun sun no. setting sun setting i'm gonna do <laughs> it i'm gonna do it i have the add the cart button right here <laughs> so Is I, that- I will say i saw this game on my iphone when i was trying to find a new game to play and i thought to myself this is way too complicated and i'm gonna be too annoyed with the touch controls so i'm not gonna get it on my phone yeah yeah but you should not have said it was on steam yeah (laughs) that was a mistake on steam (laughs) uh on on the phone it's definitely really hard to control and but it's nice to just be in bed and waste six hours of your life playing when your wife is next to you saying hey i'm (laughs) Nope. Never mind. Guys, I don't. I don't mean to throw more uh, gasoline on this hype fire, but this game has dedicated servers. Uh, yes. Uh, 
<laughs> you don't I'm touch another man's ministry. <laughs> you know, I was trying to find that to clip it. And honestly, it wasn't as funny. And it's not because of how serious it was. I didn't blow up as much as I thought I did. <laughs> and so it was just kind of like this simmering tension. And it was not as good as I thought it was. Uh, I have never been more frightened in my life than that moment. <laughs> never touched another man's factorio. <laughs> but I will say this. Having watched the entire cl- segment to try and clip from it, I'm still on the right there. <laughs> <laughs> and what about Sea of Thieves? <laughs> <laughs> okay that one's fair that one's fair i watched that clip because i was gonna clip it for the shorts and i got too much too stressed out so i couldn't do it because <laughs> you are so you get like serious ian mode and you were so yeah. like because i like dropped it because i i was you can see me on camera how pissed i am so i dropped it yeah and every time i said something else like to go do something you're like well, yeah, just keep an eye out for a rock. <laughs> and I was so... I oh, distinctly remember rock. afterwards <laughs> complaining about it to Karen. You're like, yeah, yeah he was yeah. such an ass tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I will say, I think I took it too far with you, Will, when it sh- I should have taken it that far with Karen and Zach, who were not helping at all. <laughs> It was like I was the only other one playing with you and you just forgot about them because they were idiots. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I was downstairs checking the map and I came upstairs and was like, hey, Rock. <laughs> oh, oh see boy. Thieves. Anyways. Um, <clears throat> so oh, let me I was just gonna say, oh, sorry. Uh, Ministry is free on the developer site. You don't have to buy it on Steam. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. So I like crazy. that. Oops. You want to post that <laughs> link that in the t- in the Discord? Yeah, I got it. So we may be playing that at some point. In yeah, the Saturday night, baby. Um, so uh, I've been playing more Dragon Quest VIII. Uh, I've kind of not put it on the back burner, but uh, I'm at a point. So I'm like following a guide just to just help me along because it's like my second real art JRPG, and I want to make sure I'm not like really messing stuff up or anything. The only issue is, like, it gets to points where it's like, hey, this is the next boss. Here's a recommended level. And it says level 21, and my highest characters right now are 18. And that, in my brain, is like, oh, do I have to grind? And so I was like, oh, let me look up level grinding in Dragon Quest VIII. And every single guide for level grinding (laughs) is for post-main quest level grinding to get the post-post stuff afterwards. And I'm like, no, I just want to beat the main game. So I, I've taken to, before bed, I just run around, like, the highest level area I'm at currently and just fight a bunch of people. Mm-hmm. And so I, I level up maybe once, like, a little mini session. So I'm, like, getting up there to 21, and then I can go. I might overlevel a little bit just to breeze through this. Um, mostly because I'm also, like, bad with strategizing the combat because... Sometimes I'm not used to it. I'm like, oh, I should psych up or I should defend this round because he's going to do like a big attack. So, which is actually helpful with the Chrono Trigger series, uh, having Chris there, who's really good at, or not really good, but he's played a lot of JRPGs. So when I fight a boss, he goes, hey, Will, keep your eyes open. There's a tactic with this guy. And Mm -hmm. like the last boss I fought, if I slash him when he's charging up, his big attack never happens. He resets. So... That kind of stuff really intrigues me um, as someone who like boss fights for me are like Nintendo games or uh, uh, like Dark Souls. So I never think about like using specific like things to cancel attacks. But now that I'm thinking about mm-hmm. it, it kind of makes sense, like knockback and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. Also, last weekend, uh, we sh- me, Karen and Chris played some Mario Party 2. Uh, that game is a big load of bullshit. Uh, we put. Uh, excuse me. I watched that stream. It is the right level of BS. I'm glad you got so served. So crazy. <laughs> uh, we put Luigi on hard, which just means that he automatically wins and is perfect at everything. Uh, and then at one point, Karen and I swap stars. Then I found two hidden star blocks, which are random. You land and you hit a block and you get a star. Mm-hmm. Then I accidentally gave my stars away to Chris, who then had seven stars, and then he hit, found two hidden star blocks and got up to nine. Uh, it was the right amount of bullshit, uh, but it's also made me discover 
how like it's Mario Party games are not good games, but they're very fun to stream and very fun to be with a friend because it like creates that yeah. conflict and all that sort of stuff. So it's also good for clipping. So I think we're gonna try to play some more of those. I did buy six N sixty four controllers uh, off of eBay, uh, kind of by accident. I bought five, and then I I no one outbid me on the sixth one, so I got a six. <laughs> um, so I'm putting the three. Uh, from my childhood away and then i'm gonna <clears throat> i might sell two of these because i only need four really or maybe just keep two for backup because i know they're tested and cleaned uh i'm gonna test mm -hmm. them tomorrow after work uh with my crt um and yeah they may be worth keeping just because um if you remember game original gamecube controllers are very hard to find now because of the the smash community mm -hmm. so i could I'm not saying the same thing's going to happen with the N64, but yeah. those the original N64 controllers, they're probably going to go bad, so you might as well keep two around. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of what I was thinking, is like, those sticks go bad regardless, because they're crappy, so... As long as I don't play Mario 1, where you... Or Mario Party 1, where you gotta, like, rub the stick. Anyways, um, this leads us all to the great discussion of Valheim. Boy, is this game fun. Um... Mm. I, I don't know about you, Zach, but when someone tells me an early access game, I think about, I'm going to play it for a little bit, and then it's going to get very repetitive, and I'm going to stop playing it because there's not enough content or not enough sort of that. Mm -hmm. And that's the usual yeah. approach. I'm not saying that's a bad approach. I'm saying that's how most people do it because it's easy to get the money in with a promise rather than delivering. And I think the developers of Valheim, who I don't know who they are, I know the publisher is Coffee Stain, uh, they yeah. have delivered tenfold as far as content, as far as... Uh, real quick, I just want to say, you said it a little bit derogatory in that providing a promise but not content. But I think the other thing is that if you're starting work on a big project, it's always good to get it in front of customers or users as quickly as possible. So then you have time and maneuverability yeah. to iterate on their feedback. Yeah, yeah. So so there is there is a good edge to no, uh, not providing a full-fledged game in early access. Yeah, I, I didn't mean that. Yeah, you're right. I did not mean that derogatory. I meant that's usually how early access games are yeah. because that works yeah. so well, and that's a good way of doing it. So it's surprising that this one wasn't that. This was like, there's so mm -hmm. much out there already. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's... Zach, I don't know if you want to talk about it. Yeah, no, I, and I totally agree. It's one of those games where, I mean, with Seven Days or even Minecraft in the early access, it was you'd get to a certain point and then you'd be like, "All right, well, I've had my fun," and then I'll then I've got, uh, and then in six months you'll come back to it and be like, "Oh, I forgot that they added all these things." And this game just has so much that I haven't hit that point of like, "Oh, I can't wait to come back to this game in six months to play something or some new features." It's like I haven't even gotten past the second boss yet and mm -hmm. they and we and will and i we took our boat the crave down to uh, a little area and i i had heard on a ask reddit someone said the ask reddit was like what's the last or the last game you played is the game you're stuck in how screwed up are you and someone wrote valheim and then someone said yeah just don't go to the plains so we pop into the plains after passing through a couple different biomes and instantly these like mosquitoes just started chasing us. And I was like, wait, we're going to get powerful enough that we could actually live here in the plains and not have to worry about these mosquitoes. So I'm just super pumped that, that it's, it seems like there's a plethora way more than an early access game. A, a, any other that I've played. Yeah. It's, it's certainly crazy. Uh, save data. Yes. You should be playing Valheim. It's just like, I don't know, the music's really good. It's got good atmosphere. It's got really good progression. Um, yeah, like today, Chris and I played for a little bit. We like sailed down, like uh, <clears throat> we want to set up a new base. So we like uh, set up some portals, got these portals connected. We sailed all the way down there in one boat, died, had to then sail all the way back down in another boat. <laughs> Um, Die. got all this stuff set up finally got the portal connected and now we're just building out this base chris spent all day cutting down a forest like legit cutting down a forest <laughs> it, it i looked, love that there were just logs everywhere the river was full of logs and then you mm -hmm. cut the logs and they split in half into two smaller logs and you cut those and they explode into wood um everything feels good in this game if you ask me this if this game like had rumble in it i would say yes even though it doesn't 
just the way you like Got hit it. something feels good. So. You can uh, you can uh, like knock back and en- like you can shield break enemies. You can block. I have this huge uh, hammer called the stag breaker that I slam down, pushes all the enemies away. Um, there's giant trolls. There's sea serpents. There's giant oh, yeah. mosquitoes. There's villages of goblins. Villages of Draugr I found today. Um, it's just absolute insanity. Um, it's yeah. I, I just it. I fall in love with this game. I'm 20 hours in, and where I can only survive in the second biome. Like, it's crazy. It's absolutely yeah. crazy. Um, yeah, the second biome is still terrifying. Yeah, it, it oh, its atmosphere is also incredible. Uh, the the building is really good too. Uh, today I was having a little frustration with it, but it's all like kind of physics-y based. So I was trying to build a bridge over a river, so I had to make sure to like run wood under the water so then I could make sure wood is stuck into the ground to build up. So you can oh, snap yeah. things together, but you can also choose to free place. So yeah. I was getting frustrated because I'm trying to snap these poles into the ground so they support. And then if you can't get it to snap, you can either dig a hole, snap it, and then fill the hole, or you can just free place it inside of each other and they will like lock together. So gotcha. And there's like smoke physics, so you need to have a chimney, um, or that's, else you get I smoked know, out. Cool part. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Or if it rains, your fire goes out unless you have a cover on your chimney. Yeah, and then yeah. you can't bring metal through the through, through the portal, so we have like a metal detector now. So like three times, I ran towards the portal to go through it and just walk through and fell into the water because it says you have metal on you. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it! Um, yeah, it's it's really good. It's got. It's like they learned everything from a. They took all the right takeaways from all the other survival games, uh, mm-hmm. including like the sailing from Sea of Thieves. Um, it's yeah, it's yeah, absolutely wonderful. Um, anything else you want to say about it, Zach? No, I'm just. Uh, I mean, this podcast is great. No, but... don't. You're opening the game, aren't you? <laughs> no, I, I don't. Just, the I quickly. just want to play. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not. I, I opened up Steam and I've got 11 hours so far. So yeah, I got to get up to Will's 20. I think I hit 20 today. Um, okay, let me. Um, yeah, it's. Oh, I just. It's. It's one of those games. It's all you think about. And it's all you want to do. And mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, so moving into the news. Um, today was the PS5 state of play. Uh, Zach, I don't know if you caught it. I know Ian did. Uh, <clears throat> Ian, you wanna you wanna chat about this? Tell me about it. Yeah, sure. So let me. Um, I I actually I missed it. I wow. had a I had a timer to watch it, but I got so busy that I just blew right through it. And then like seven thirty, which is two and a half hours afterwards, I like went on Twitter and it was like this stuff from State of Play, and I was like, oh, I should probably watch it. So, anyways, I I watched it after the fact, um, which was kind of good. I didn't have to deal with the stream. I dealt with basically the the archive of it on YouTube, the upload, which is always nice. Um, I I thought it was pretty solid. They had a lot of interesting things in here. Um, They showed some more of Kina Bridge of Spirits, which is it's basically the way I remember it is the way they described it when they first announced it. It's a game made by a bunch of animators. So it looks like a very high quality 3D animation movie, but as a video game. Um, and that, that looks pretty interesting. Um, they showed Oddworld because who cares? <laughs> they just keep showing that game. Hey, at least it's, it's going to be free. I'm excited for that. Yeah, that's true. I, see, I, that is something to talk about. Is I wonder if they're going to start doing that a lot more where it's not just PS Plus, but they did that with Bug Snacks, where it was free on PS5 for like a two month period. Um, so I wonder if they're going to start doing that with more games now where they're basically going to have select games that are going to be free on the PS5 for a couple months after release um, as kind of PS5 type incentives. I, I like that because a lot of times PlayStation Plus, it's it's not like Game Pass. It, it feels like if you're going to be free at launch on PlayStation Plus, you're either heavily multiplayer focused or you're not going to be that great of a game in the first place. Um, yeah. uh, Crash Bandicoot for It's About Time PS5 version. Look, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a little... I'm a little I'm a little, it's so, it's, I don't want to say it's confusing, but it's a little wonky how 
basically all PS4 games play on the PS5. There's like maybe three or four that don't. But now all these games need to come out and announce a specific PS5 edition. And it's like, I understand what you're doing. But at the same time, it's just confusing because I can play Crash Bandicoot 4 on the PS5 right now. And it will run better. It probably won't run as great as the PS5 version of Crash Bandicoot 4. But it's like, why would I wait, let alone pay for the PS5 version? It just, it doesn't, it's, it's just a little confusing. It's, I don't know, it's... I don't know. You guys feel that I don't want to say confusion, but a little bit of like bewilderment at like, why are you announcing the PS5 version? Like it's some brand new thing when I can already play it on the PS5, you know, making any sense. Yeah. It's, it's really bad. It's a really bad marketing thing because they're just, you know, they're doing it because they want you to buy their PS5 edition, but it's like, yeah, everyone knows you're just money grabbing. Yes. You can easily play or yeah, they'll try and get, no. Yeah. yeah, it'll be um, uh, they they're like I know they're talking it up a lot because it's intergenerational right now, but it it really does seem like that. What what are you? Oh, I out? was just about to talk about uh, Sifu, which is uh, an Asian martial arts game. Guess who makes that game? I know who makes that game. <laughs> the developer of Absolver, which is the first game that Will and I covered together. Uh, it's how we met, basically, was we were assigned that together to do a duo review of. Um, and I that's that why that whole fighting style game. looks. I wouldn't say it was stupid, but I'm not into fighting games, so no. I didn't really care. For it. But, uh, but yeah, this looks good. It that looks bug, really good. Cool. Yeah, it feels like they took the the good mechanics of Absolver, improved upon them and added a lot better story and art style on top. Absolver was just kind of like this weird, I don't know how to describe it. It was just kind like a bland weird. Bland fantasy sort of. It was like bland fantasy nebulous, like deliberately obscuring world building and lore, but to the extent that it was uninteresting. Yeah. Um, we also got to see more of uh, Jake Terrio's next favorite game, <laughs> Solar Ash by the Hyper Light Drifter developers heart machine um i i wasn't that crazy about playing hyperlight drifter i never did just because it was kind of a top down and i was like eh, okay but this is basically the same art style and it looks like pretty much the same gameplay but in 3d and they yeah. they deliberately said uh adventure platformer the idea being you're in an open space but you have all these platforming abilities to get you to different areas and i'm in i'm in on this i'm in this looks great this looks fantastic it looks, it's like kind of like shadow of colossus um, I still need to play Hyper Light Drifter. I, I, it is a gorgeous game, absolutely gorgeous. Um, but I have, I've never, as Jake knows, I have never played it. Um, but this looks yep. absolutely good. It kind of, it reminds me of Fury too, uh, which is that yes. like boss fighting game. So, uh, very excited. Um, we also have a game that I, I don't want to play this game, but I feel like we are going to have to play. Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. Um, I, I, I <laughs> yeah, I was mistaken. I thought this game was VR only, and that made me terrified watching it. <laughs> it's still going to be scary as like a normal, you know, controller game, etc. But I thought it was going to be VR. I didn't God, see. Man, I, I didn't watch the whole trailer. So what's the conceit of it? It's basically Five Nights at Freddy's, but first person, like 3D first person. Oh, full no. I, no. So I'm you good. are. Nope. No. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you're like going around the space at night with a flashlight. No. And then you have to like climb through no. the, the, the kitty playground. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And then you like turn the light around and one of the guys is like creeping through the slide and you're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Wait, Ian, why haven't we, for shorts, why haven't we clipped any of Spooky Pixel yet? <laughs> oh. Man, because it's not, it's... I might do, I'll I do think that. we all know. <laughs> For that toddler in the, uh, that, the Ghost Hunter one. <laughs> oh, you know what? We don't have that, we don't have that clip because it didn't archive, but there was a kid there. And was, I know, there, I have, I have that footage. Oh, there. yeah, I there did save kid. that footage. Because I oh, recorded it. Thank you. That's that somewhere. was, there's um, terrifying. So what's, um, what's Five Nights at Freddy's is like a huge, weird niche, like, but there's a huge community yeah. around it. Is it just, I mean, when you guys were playing that game, was that the original game you guys were playing? 
that's the original game. And I, as far as I know, the other four sequels are pretty much the same, but they add like new creatures and new environments and stuff, but it's pretty much the same gameplay. And I don't know, it's, it's hard to describe, but it's one of those games where it kind of like hello neighbor, where for whatever reason, it really catches on with like, like tweens and preteens yeah. and to the extent where I'll, I'll tell you a story about five years ago, we were exchanging gifts for Christmas and my mom gives a gift to my brother-in-law and he opens it up and it's a pair of pajama pants. It was five nights at Freddy's pajama pants that she just happened to get at target or Walmart because they were on sale. And it was like, what? <laughs> like she did not choose them. Like this is the type of game where for whatever reason it has like hit the stratosphere of popularity yeah. and merchandising that it is now a household name. It's crazy. Um, I mean, it's a good game. It's just it, it's just kind of inexplicable as to why it took off as much as it did. Yeah, okay. it's, yeah, it's that, like that's so you know, confusing. It, yeah, it's yeah. that weird lore thing where it's like, yeah, Hello Neighbor is one of those games. I, I don't know if it's like ease. I don't know if it's like it's something kids talk about easily. And it's mysterious enough it. that you can still have the kid on the playground who makes up things about video games that we had as kids. And you could still have that it. about like, oh, did you get the procedurally generated room in Hello Neighbor that lets you get the gun right away? Or that hides the key on the red carpet that's obvious? Um, yeah. <laughs> like stuff like that versus, I, like I feel like you get that with these games. And then on the flip side of that, just good games, arguably like Minecraft or even Fortnite and stuff like that. Or kick off a because they're free and b because they're also good games and not open like not terri terrifying for uh yeah although i will say for i can i can understand like parent parental ignorance with hello neighbor where it doesn't seem horrible but five night at freddy's seems horrible yeah but at the same time i mean you don't uh, i guess parental you don't controls aren't on by default yes yeah, and true. you know if you if you're kind of a, okay, there's a latchkey kid. What do you call the parent of a latchkey kid? Whatever that is. Workaholic. If you're, if you're a workaholic, then you don't know what your kid's doing in their free time. You That's know? true. You give them an iPad, who knows what they're doing? You give them a, a, a PC or laptop or whatever, a console, you don't know what they're doing. Yeah, they play they're download whatever they want. Um, so yeah, it's, it's stuff like that. So it's, anyways, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. I'm not saying we're going to play it, but we still have this spooky pixel series, and this is a strong contender for an episode. Yeah. Oh, uh, we, we, Ian had a good idea that I'm not going to say, but I'm excited if we end up filming it. I, I really wanted them to put a release date on this because I hope it, it yeah. could be this. Oh, God, it's terrifying. Anyways, uh, we saw more of Deathloop. Uh, I wasn't crazy about this trailer just because it didn't really show anything crazy new. I'm still excited to see that game mostly because of previous trailers they showed how the mechanics of the world work but um yeah on uh, on around the monitor I, I might have been david said hey why are you still spending marketing money on this game everybody knows about it like like why are you putting it into these big events as if it's some crazy reveal but i i, I yeah. wonder if it's ps5 or sony realizing it's their last time they can cash in really on a bethesda game since this is microsoft's death loop Exclusive to the PS5. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, PS5 and, and, PSC, and PC. And PS4. Yeah. Or PC, yeah, yeah. So I wonder if they're just um, trying to make that money now um, and not have to worry about it yeah. later. And they uh, also, maybe... they have a marketing budget already. They're going to use it. It's not like they're asking for more money for each event. So Yeah. Plus, they probably have a hole in their schedule that they might as well fill with with that. It was a very well done trailer. It just didn't really add anything yeah. that they hadn't already. It, it kind of seems like it's assets from probably the opening titles. It was very like James Bondy, like yeah. silhouettes and stuff. And I was like, I wonder if this is the title song, and like this is the opening mm -hmm. of the game. I hope that game's good. It looks really, really fun. Uh, yeah. yeah. But next up, folks, we have to talk about Knockout City. Because it went from one of the worst video game trailers I've ever seen in last week's Nintendo Direct to actually having some pretty interesting gameplay. Did you, did you kind of see that? It's kind of like powered up dodgeball. It's kind of weird. Yeah, I, I, I thought it looked interesting because it, it gave me some Windjammer vibes. And they're like, depending on how fast you catch the ball and then throw it, 
like it's faster yeah. or harder stuff like that and they they showed off some of the other modes um in the, i watched the the giant bomb stream of it and one of the funny things was how much this in this game they didn't say battle royale like nobody says battle royale and same with the returnal trailer nobody says roguelike they're like every time you die it's a different level like these games like they're not saying the things they are because they don't want to get caught up in that but wait is knockout city a battle royale though it is a battle royale yeah and one of one of the one of the specific there was ko and then there was team ko yeah but i believe the the main mode that was shown off on the nintendo switch one was the oh, was, battle was the royale. battle royale and there's a one on one battle royale as well yeah but it, just to continue on this roller coaster ride terrible trailer yeah nintendo direct uh state of play pretty good trailer showing off a lot of crazy mechanics that make you want to play it however this is being released for the ps4 for 1999 folks this is a playstation plus game put it out there playstation plus i will absolutely buy it and then if it's good i'll stick around for it this should not be a 20 dollar game um so yeah, Knockout City, kind of back where it was. Um, just scrolling yeah, through, we did have Returnal that you mentioned. Will, you want to talk about Returnal? Yeah, it's uh, Housemark's new game coming out. It is a 3D or a third-person shooter, 3D third-person shooter. You are uh, landing in a crashed ship, and then you're fighting aliens. You're trying to make your way, at least in the trailer that showed off, you're making your way towards this white signal i think it came up as uh and like you're mm-hmm. trying to figure out the mystery and every time you die you start over again it's pretty much a roguelike uh should be fun seems a good time there was a great youtube comment where someone said returnal reminds me a lot about edge of tomorrow in which uh jeff grubb oh, said totally. man who's only seen boss baby thinks next movie he watches <laughs> is a lot like boss baby <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like of course um i think it no, looks I, it, I, 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 Sorry, I literally opened that trailer and skipped to like 54, and that monster immediately looked like the Edge of Tomorrow thing. Well, as you <laughs> yeah. said that, I was like, yep. But then, yeah, no, for sure. The rest of it's nothing like it, but that monster. But yeah. also, like, Sorry. just the fact that it's a roguelike and you start fresh every time. It's like, yes, that's been a concept that's been around for a long time. Uh, I think it looks really cool. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. Um, I, I, they haven't proven to me, like, the fact that they're drumming up this roguelike procedurally generated sort of thing uh oh i don't know if it's procedurally generated but each level's different again uh i don't it's got a 70 dollars price tag on it i don't know if that convinces me to spend 70 dollars on this game mm-hmm. i'll have to see how it reviews because honestly this, the story could be amazing you never know um yeah so, yeah, yeah i think for me it's I'm, gonna, I'm waiting on the reviews as well because for me the pinnacle of roguelike games right now is hades and i say that because not just the the gameplay is good, but it also does a lot of run to run progression, and it also does a lot of story progression based on how many runs you're doing. And so it's not just like a normal rogue like where it's you beat your head against the wall until you succeed. It's no every run, no matter how short it is, gets you a little something. And if Returnal doesn't do that well enough, if it ekes too much towards that typical rogue like of like, haha, we changed things, maybe you'll get through it this time, or now start start all over again then I don't want to play it. I don't want to pay 70 bucks for it. I don't want to waste my time on it. You know, it's like, I feel like the genre has moved forward because of Hades and because of other games who have done similar techniques as well. And if Returnal doesn't do that, then, blech, you know? Yeah. The other thing is, um, I, I've been riding, I've been riding a hobby horse lately and the horse is, trip, are AAA games actually bad? And by that, I mean, there's a moment in Returnal where she like finds this temple and she goes in the temple and then she walks up to this podium and there's this glowing object and she goes and he goes and then it's like plus 20 damage to melee attacks and it was like okay but like if i'm playing hades or any other game like when i get that like procedurally generated pop-up modifier it just pops up i look at it i would go okay i want that one and then i keep playing the game I don't want to have to go through some find the temple, do an animation every time just to get a modifier for every single run. And I was thinking about it and I can just see the developers going, we should have that. Yeah, but this is a triple A game with a triple A budget. So we got to have animation on top of it. We got to have sound effects on top. We got to have a whole separate space for it. And it's like, why are you overcomplicating the game? So long story short, 
I'm worried that making a roguelike AAA is going to add so much unnecessary aesthetics and whooshiness to it that is going to take away from the core thing about a roguelike, which is about that that gameplay, the progression, and about the variety of the runs. So I'm I'm a little worried about Returnal, but like you said, let's let's see what the reviews are. Yeah, for sure. Um, we need to talk about Final Fantasy VII remake. Um, I don't care about Yuffie. As Will pointed out before the stream started, Yuffie is also what I called my previous robot vacuum. <laughs> I don't really care. Um, I I do care that they're adding some PS5 enhancements because I was literally just about to start playing this game. Like before I started State of Play, I was like, maybe it's time to play Final Fantasy VII Remake. And then they announced all these uh, PS5 enhancements that they're going to come out with um, on, I believe it's June 10th, which is a long ways away. Um, but I will say, so Will uh, or Zach, did you guys watch this live, the state of play? I watched it live, yeah. Okay. I So like I mentioned earlier, I watched the, the upload of it after the fact. So I was not watching a live stream, but it was like infuriating, but also just hilarious how even though it's an upload, the video is still compressed and it's still chunky in parts. So... The Final Fantasy VII Remake segment, they literally go split screen, PS4 version, PS5 version, and there's a line down the middle. And like literally, I'm just looking at it going, what's the difference? Because they <laughs> until they until they got to like the fog and the lighting segment, it was literally the exact same image because it was so compressed. It was running at like 720p, bumped up to 1080p, and then YouTube compressed. And I'm like... There's no difference between the two of them. It also, was so stupid. It showed cloud. Then you clearly you're like, what is wrong with this image? And then the glass of your screen shatters, and it just says PS5 graphics. <laughs> and it's the same cloud. It's just like there's no difference. Finally, know? graphics have come to the PS5, folks. <laughs> yeah, I mean to be fair, they are they are trying to do 4K 60. up to 60. And so you, you have to do the thing where you, you want to prioritize frame rate or you want to prioritize the resolution. So I'm sure there's a trailer out there probably, hopefully somewhere, which is like the raw 4K60 upload of that comparison video. And I guarantee you it does look better on the PS5. But what a god-awful, terrible way to show it off. Especially, yeah. like, I watched it in the upload. I watched the raw, like, the upload to YouTube, which is supposed to be the great version that doesn't have live stream buffering. And it, there's no difference! There's no <laughs> difference! <laughs> The, yeah, the only thing this did for me was in my brain, I said, I removed Final Fantasy VII Remake from the PS4 slot and put it in the PS5 slot for when I eventually have to play it. That's where I'm yeah. playing it. <laughs> yeah, um, I just went I just went from literally buy it tomorrow to buy it in June. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I should buy the PS4 version now. That, that's right, because it's a free upgrade. Version. Might as well. Yeah. So I'll I'll start looking for that deal and then I'll buy it and then I'll sit on it for a while. Yeah. Um, but I believe unless I missed anything, that was pretty much it. I think it was. Yeah. I thought it was a decent state of play. I thought it was better than the the um the uh, Nintendo Direct from last yeah, week. Yeah, you're right. I I think I was just sour on it because I just it was I heard more about games I didn't care about and anything they announced was things yeah. I didn't care about. So. Yeah, it, it was pretty good as far as what they did, but also opening it with the crash thing was stupid. No, like, what? Okay. Um, Fair point. So other, we'll stick with PlayStation. Other PlayStation news, uh, there was an interview with Jim Ryan uh, where he revealed that they are working on the next generation of VR for the PlayStation, which is surprising uh, because when they announced that the PS5 wasn't really supporting PlayStation 4 VR. A lot of people were like, oh, they're either getting out of the game. No, no it does. No, no, I mean, it doesn't. There's no, the PS5, you can't play PS5 games. Oh, yeah, VR. yeah. Like, yeah, that's, it's a that's separate true. thing. Yeah. So a lot of people took that as like, oh, they're they're working on something or they're abandoning it for now. They'll come back later. Because I think his comments at the time were kind of vague about that too. Um, but anyways, he revealed they are working on it. That it. It's got buzzwords with it. It supposedly enhances everything. It's a single cord connection, new VR controllers. Uh, it won't launch in 2021, so don't get your hopes up. Uh, they hope to offer better resolution, field of view, tracking input, all sorts of stuff. Um, I think it's cool that more people are getting into the uh, consumer VR game. 
Uh, I, I also think it's cool that Apple's getting into it enough to make a high-end prototype. Uh, the, the, cause you know, they're only doing that to see, to get high-end feedback and all that sort of stuff. So the more people in that space, the better, because then it makes it better for everyone else. Um, I think yep. that'll be fun to check out. Any thoughts on that? Either of you? Um, I, I would just say the PlayStation VR was surprisingly successful. Um, I'm going to look at the, uh, number sold. I believe it was like 2 million plus. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It's as of January, 2020, 5 million. Wow. It, it is by far, I, the quest Two may be better by better now, but it, it, for a while it was the, the most sales of any VR headset period. So like I said, with the Apple VR headset, I may not be that crazy about the PlayStation VR headset because it's going to be shoestringed a little bit by the PlayStation 5. They didn't really have good tracking on the PlayStation VR originally, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to be stuck in the VR, the PlayStation environment. But anything that makes VR more accessible and more popular is going to help PC VR. It's going to help standalone VR. And I think VR really just needs a shot in the arm. It needs a lot of AAA developers coming in and trying to make big budget, well done games. It needs cheaper hardware. It needs it needs better market saturation. And I think PlayStation 5 VR, even though I'm not crazy about it, probably won't buy it, will definitely boost the amount of people who want to play VR. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, what about you, Zach? Looked like you were about to say something. Uh, I, I just think back to uh, I'm for my first I really wish I had either kept it or sold it and then immediately bought something else. Zach, you're going I a know, little robot for us. I know. I, I see my connection. Uh, out to try to on my I have nothing to use the internet right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just let me just give me a hand signal. Just, just let us know when it's back together. Um, uh, uh, and then we can we can hear your great great opinions on this. Uh, Dan Tex in the chat, Dan Tex, sorry, says high end eventually trickles down to consumers, which is always great. Exactly. So hopefully that happens. Um, yeah. So uh, moving on, uh, <clears throat> some quick hitters here. Um, let's go on to the EA stuff. A lot of EA news this week. Uh, Anthem next, as people are calling it, officially canned. Um, we know the past year there have been developers or yeah, mostly year developers working to try to bring the new pitch of Anthem forward. There was like a small team apparently at EA trying to work on that. And EA went to review it last week and they decided, nah, I have, I have a bit of a, I don't want to say a hot take, but it's a little bit of a smack. On Ooh, this. smack, smack me. Yeah, so they basically said, you know, Anthem, blah, blah, blah. We're not going to go forward with Anthem next. Hell, blah, blah, blah. We're going to continue, blah, 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 blah. How dare they? How dare they blame this on COVID? They said, quote, 2020 was a year unlike any other, however. And while we continue to make progress against all our game projects at Bioware, working from home during the pandemic has, has had an impact on our productivity. And not everything we have planned as a studio before COVID-19 can be accomplished without putting undue stress on our teams. How dare you? I am actually kind of pissed at this <laughs> because they made a bad game. They made a very bad game. And this was them... This is an opportunity for them to come and say, like, hey, we made mistakes, we made a bad game, and you know what? We're not gonna be able to fix it. So we're moving on. But no, they said, no, 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 no. It's not our fault. We can't, we can't make Anthem better because of COVID. And it's like, no, you wouldn't, COVID wouldn't have been a factor, period, if you made the game good in the first right. place. And it's just like, don't blame it on COVID. Step up and own your mistakes. And they didn't do that with this. Yeah, because they could have easily been like, hey, our plans to change this were affected by COVID and all that sort of stuff but to solely put it on that in a sort of sideways way is not yeah is not okay uh um, yeah, did, didn't we know anthem was shitty before COVID yeah this yeah. was their like revival pitch they were going to try to do yeah they, they were literally going to like remake the game oh. and and it basically came down to them being like we're not going to do it and it's because 2020 was a tough year and COVID is tough and it's like no own yeah. your mistake admit the game is bad yeah Oof. you know um, other EA news other than the great big anthem is that, uh, they, they just canceled the Gaia game that was in, uh, in development for a couple of years. This was actually shown at that EA play event last summer. 
uh, it, it was like, uh, they're kind of like Assassin's Creed third person fighter game they were putting together. Um, I thought it looked kind of cool from what it was. Apparently it's been on and off development, rebooted, rebooted, rebooted uh, over the past five years. So that was canceled, unfortunately. Um, and then uh, they did say about the Anthem stuff that they were, Bioware is now focusing on Dragon Age, which is meh, and Mass Effect, which is boo. Stop. Uh, and then... I'm sorry. I, can we just go back to Guy real quick? You guys really should uh i, I wanted to send this to, did you have you seen the footage lately will of gaia uh just that one from last year okay i just want to i just want to send this to you guys real quick they showed this at um ea play this was how they announced and showed off gaia and oh, yeah from yeah. my highly trained eye this looks like this looks like a developer got four days to play around in Unreal Engine. And yeah. that's it. <laughs> yeah. It is like literally no textures, just like generic buildings. And it's just a character like doing Jump. weird movement stuff. And it's like, that's not a game. How dare you show that? What? What are you doing? You like know? at the time, yeah. when, like that lady, she doesn't say this has been in development for a while. She just says it's a new third person game, action, blah, blah, blah game. And like that sounds great. But with all the behind the scenes of like, this has been rebooted. This is all this. They've been working on, on and off five years. Yeah. It's like, okay, yes. Throw that out the door. Get those people working on something that's actually going to be real. Yeah. Um, I'm just, yeah. I'm just surprised. That is not, that is not a good way to show off or announce a game is just be like, Hey, look at this weird tech demo thing we made. And it's real wonky. It's like, you got to have a bigger announcement than that. So hearing that that's canceled, I'm like, yeah, it makes sense. That makes sense. Looking at wh what they had to show off. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of weird. Um, and then, uh, supposedly because Jedi fallen order did well, uh, EA management has backed off on Bioware, including a multiplayer mode in dragon age four. Um, they were originally going to have a multiplayer. Uh, actually, sorry, I should say, because Jedi Fallen Order did well and Anthem did so poorly, they are now doing this. Um, they originally wanted a multiplayer mode forced into, they were requiring it uh, out of uh, Dragon Age 4. I'm not saying that would have been bad, but when your whole pitch is you're bringing back one of your biggest single-player franchises uh, and seeing how many people were pissed about cyberpunk adding a multiplayer mode years before it came out. Uh, I can only guess that this was a big relief to some people at Bioware. Uh, even though the mass effect, uh, three multiplayer, I believe my friend who does not play RPGs was like addicted to that. So, yeah, it's, it's hard to tell, you know, there were people talking about games as a service, but this isn't specifically saying that it was games as a service. Um, there, they removed all planned multiplayer components. Uh, I'm just grabbing some quotes right here. Uh, they rebooted the game in 2017 to push for long-term monetization. Um, so it, it's not quite clear that it was super strong games as a service. My guess is it was probably like, um, Marvel's Avengers where it was all about, you have a single player campaign, but then we also have this heavy multiplayer component, which is really, really the end game. And it's just a rehash of the single player stuff. And that's where you're going to get your co-op in and all that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. A lot of stuff going on at EA. It feels like they're just cleaning house before the fiscal year ends. So they can kind of start fresh. Um, it's just more publicized this year because of oh, Anthem and all you. that sort of stuff. Stock broker. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm in the red. Stocks. Anyways, <laughs> everybody is. <laughs> everybody is. Uh, some. Uh, we're kind of wrapping it up here because I want to play Valheim. <clears throat> A couple quick things. <laughs> I should say the big thing left on the list here uh, is uh, uh, Vampire: The Masquerade Bloodlines Two. Is Ooh. Polygon used the term delayed indefinitely? Nothing they like I can you can extrapolate that, but nothing definitive definitively says that. Um they are rem yeah, the they are removing the developer of the game and they're gonna find a new developer for the game. Uh they are stopped taking pre orders, not coming out in twenty twenty one. I mean honestly, if you have to delay a game 
this is kind of how you do it. You just tell everyone, you cancel pre-orders, all that sort of stuff, which it's crazy that they canceled pre-orders. Uh, like there were people were responding to this. There's like marketing emails and stuff like pre-order bonuses and stuff out there. Like this game yeah. is done enough to have that stuff. But wow. now they're switching everything. I don't know. This seems COVID related. I don't know if it's Chris Avalone related since he was, I believe the head writer on it. Um, mm-hmm. Same with uh, uh, not Dead Rising. What's that? Dying Light Two. He was also the head writer on that, and that game's sitting in the weeds. Uh, meanwhile, Dying Light One has Viking DLC that came out last week, which is crazy. Um, yeah, so I, I never played Vampire: The Masquerade Bloodlines. I know it's a very highly pra- praised game. I don't like vampires. I don't like modern vampires. I guess. If you can call them that. Um, I like vampires in this yeah. fa- fantasy setting, I should say. I feel like I feel like this is a good decision. You know, like you said, they were so close to release. I complete speculation here. I wonder if they looked at Cyberpunk and said, we cannot push something out that is buggy or barely good just because we feel like we have to. It is Cyberpunk is a good example of, no, wait, it's actually better to pull back sometimes. And I wonder if they did that and they looked at the studio that made it and they said, we can't trust you to turn this boat around or fix things. So we're going to take it away and, and try it somewhere else. Um, and, and that's a very tough decision. And I don't know what the state of the game was. I don't know if it's going to be any better for it. But I got to say, I trust Paradox Interactive. They're, they're a pretty good publisher. They have a lot of good stuff under them. And if they made this decision, it was probably the right call. Probably better than putting out a, a game that was not up to snuff. Yeah. Um, awesome. Uh, next, Ian, you want to talk about the Stardew Valley board game? Yes, there's the Stardew Valley board game. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. You know, uh, a lot of people in the board game industry now they do Kickstarter, but the this this is from Concerned Ape, who is the developer of Stardew Valley. He's been working with some people on it, and he basically said, "Hey, guess what? I'm publishing a Stardew Valley game. Um, it looks great. It has a lot of original art. Uh, it has a." It you know if you when you, Stardew Valley is about harvesting, it's about growing, it's about kind of a little bit of engine building, and that you're you're building a farm to get more money to buy more objects, etc. And this game looks like it is it is it's got a lot of objects in it. You know, it's got a lot of farm plants, it's got a lot of plots, it's got a lot of cards for people for villagers, it's got resource tokens, etc. Um, full disclosure, I bought a game. I literally I saw that it was announced and I bought it. I love board games. This looks like it has the right mechanics. The rulebook is out there, which I actually probably should read to see what the mechanics are actually Ooh, like. Send that to me. Um, but yeah, so they they had um, a uh, first printing. They said, we've got a first printing. Let's see if it sells. And it sold out in what? A couple hours? Isn't that right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so I, w- I would expect to see more of this. It, it This is Stardew Valley it makes perfect sense as a board game. Like I, there's harvest dice, which is kind of similar to it. There's, um, a lot of the, uh, Uwe Rosenberg games, you know, like, uh, uh, Agricola, Agricola, Caverna, um, Uh, Viking, uh, Viking feast, feast for Viking, feast for Odin, feast for Odin. (laughs) Nailed it. Yeah. We know board games. Um, uh, Caton, it's the learners of Caton. Yeah. So I think the mechanics of Stardew Valley lean themselves really well to board games, and it makes sense for them to do this, especially since they have the brand recognition. So, which Zach, I'm I don't excited. know if you've ever, ever played Stardew Valley, but I think you'd like. That I game. never, I never have. It's 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 always been on my list of things like, oh, I, I want to play that game sometime. Yeah, I think but I think it's, you um, like that. It's it's good. It's just they do have the reason why I didn't like it is it's top down. They did eventually fix it where it was too zoomed in for a while, no matter what size monitor you're on, but they fixed that. But it does have a mechanic where you have a certain amount of energy per day, and then you have to go to sleep for the day. And that really bugged me. But other than that, it's pretty great. Yeah. Um, awesome. Uh, final bit of news for the show, folks. I am very excited about this because I beat Diablo 1 last year. And I waited to play Diablo 2, and boy, was I rewarded because Diablo 2 Resurrected is slated for 2021. I am very excited. Uh, It's interesting because literally like two weeks ago, 
I was like, oh, I was trying to think of some. Well, Karen and I have been playing uh, Mario 3D World. I was trying to think of some more uh, multiplayer games to play. And I was like, oh, we should play through Diablo 3. I have it on Xbox. Diablo 3 is pretty fun, especially for like someone who hasn't played it before. Um, and it's pretty good multiplayer. Uh, and I was like, oh, I should play through Diablo 3. And then, lo and behold, Diablo 2. Uh, I'm very excited for it. I like the Diablo games. There's something... I put put Diablo in the realm of Dwarf Fortress and uh, Dragon Quest, where I'm somehow obsessed with it, even though I haven't played it very much, uh, mm-hmm. other than 3. So, very much looking forward to this. They seem to have done a bang-up job with the HDifying of it. Uh, they're kind of keeping the systems relatively the same, uh, art style relatively the same. I believe... This is really what they pulled Vicarious Visions in to help with uh, towards the end um, or assimilated them more than they were already assimilated. Um, hopefully it comes out this year. I'm hoping October, November, uh, but I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if they pushed it. Um, also, uh, BlizzCon happened as well. They announced uh, some World of Warcraft stuff, Burning Crusade uh, Classic, which I'm slightly looking forward to. Who knows if I'll get to it. I always think about playing World of Warcraft and then I pay $15 and then I don't play it. Um, <laughs> it happens all the time. It's a yeah. great podcast game though. Uh, if you like $15 worth of podcasts. Uh, uh, I'm very excited for Diablo 2 Resurrected because they did the right thing with the art style, which is they kept it pretty much exactly the same as the original. They just up everything. So yeah. they basically... Uh, I don't know if this is exactly what they did, but it looks like they basically remade every asset and texture in the game to look identical. It just now supports up to 4K resolution and the lighting looks a little bit better. And it just like they were showing like side by sides and doing like this is the old into the new. And it's incredible. Yeah, I, I as soon as I saw it, I was like, well, when I before I saw it, I thought they were going to do the Diablo 3 thing, which Diablo 3 is a bit too cartoony. Um, it's definitely a different art style, but no, it's 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 the same as Diablo 2. It's just 4K now. And that's. I, I can't. I I I, got, I just gotta keep saying it. It's like, yeah, that's exactly what you want. It looks exactly like the original, but it doesn't look old anymore. It's it's beautiful. It, yeah, it's incredible, incredible. Very excited. Uh, and folks, that's gonna be it for us. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Let me play the little bit of outro music here. Nope, that's not. No, nope, nope. Don't you play that? Don't you is play that, that? Is that the one? What's that one? That's the sexy time song. Uh, folks, thank you for tuning in today. Ian, thank you for joining me as always. I love having thank you on the show. Love talking to you despite your poor opinion. Zachary, thank you for joining us. Uh, it was a little last minute. I texted you this morning forcing you on. But I did yep. want you on because I want to talk about Valheim. Um, <laughs> and uh, the other Zach bailed. So. Yeah, yeah, he'll be on. You want to play Valheim right after this. Yes. Yeah. So it just segues. Exactly. Uh, folks, we are Subpixel. You can find all of our content at subpixelfilms.com. They'll bring you straight to our YouTube channel where you can check out this very archive and many, many more. Saturday night, we'll be streaming 9 p.m. or during the day. Who knows? Um, I realized I wasn't as confident as I should have been. Uh, <laughs> but you can catch Local Chat episode 9 next week on Thursday at 9 p.m. Uh, we've got some shorts that have been going up. Uh, we've got another Mario Party one going up tomorrow. I'm working on a little informative one to go up. I'm going to cut some more probably tomorrow in the weekend. Uh, we're kind of pushing them up to just take advantage of a little algorithm thing. Should be fun. Hey, follow us on TikTok at Subpixel Team. Oh, yeah, do that. Uh, TikTok confuses me. I open it and it starts making noises and then I close it. Yeah, it's very annoying, but you should follow us anyways. You should do it. Um, yeah, that's it from us. You can find me on Twitter at Hunt270. You can find Ian on Twitter at Think Gibson. You can find Zach on Twitter. You can't. You can't find him. You can't do no, it. Can't. I'm oh, this song's almost TikTok. done, guys. We're almost done. Thank you very much again for watching. And we will see you. 